we are back for another PCSX2 video where we show you how to emulate PlayStation 2 games. Today, I'm going to show you a Mac for 2025. So let's get right to it. So just a little, you know, a couple of things I need to get out of the way. This is for educational purposes only, not condoning piracy, etc., etc. And the first thing you actually want to download is the Unarchiver on the Mac. I'll have a separate video for Windows, for example, as well. So just go to the unarchiver, unarchiver.com. You can download it from the Mac App Store or just directly from the website. So it'll allow you to extract files that may be the built-in system uh, for Mac doesn't allow you to extract, which is very useful when you gain ROMs and BIOS files, etc., etc. Next, what you want to do is download PCSX2, and there's the latest stable, then there's the latest nightly. A lot of people will say, you know, download the latest nightly, and when you actually download PCSX2, you know tries to update you to it it's pretty stable to be fair uh, but i'm going to show you the stable one and you know i'll probably create a separate video for that one as well and you can just you can download the nightly if you want so so i'll go to version 2.4 there used to be a time i would say go to compatibility check if your game works but look over 99 percent of the games are playable and when he says oh this is only 1.23 percent is you know perfect and 98.44 percent is playable it basically means they're all fine uh you, you can go on there and you know like this particular game and you, you can go on to the github issues and you can have a look but honestly you're all good to go and there's another link for the ps2 covers which we'll be covering very very soon so i've got three files right here one is the emulator so if you just double click that and it will extract our emulator. You want to drag that over to application. And I would go a step further. And I would personally rename this to just version, just PCSX2. The reason being, this is going to get updated, like I was saying, you know, within PCSX2. And once set up, you really shouldn't have to go to the website unless you want to reset it up on another machine. You don't want an old version in the name when it might be like version 2.5 or 2.6 or version 3. Okay, now that we've got that, the next thing we want to do is extract the BIOS file. So if we extract that, and we've got the American version right here. We can leave all this here for now. We don't need it. And we're going to extract our game as well. And in the game, there's going to be two files, the .bin and .q files. And I'll leave this to be extracting over here. I'm going to, in my documents, a folder called ROMs, folder called PS2. And I've actually put the files already there. This is what I recommend. Have some sort of layer like this. It could be on an external, you know, storage device, for example. That's fine, um, you know, if you don't want to use space on your internal machine. Because you know how Macs are with upgrading their storage. But I do recommend, you know, Sets, setting it up and organizing it properly otherwise i see people just putting them on the desktop for videos and it's like you know you're not teaching best practices okay so now that we've got that we've got that the next thing we need to do is actually open up pcsx2 and go through the setup process and if we go on there click open this will just be the first time that you ever launch it up because you've just downloaded it again the first time you launch it up it'll take a little while because it's creating all the set of files the folders and now here language i'm going to leave it as default theme i'm going to leave it as native i know people like to change it neighbor automatic updates click next now we want to you know have our bios directory you can either a change it or b add the files here i like to just put it where the default directory is so over here and i believe this was doo -doo, no, doo -doo, pcsx2 where's the box there we go so if we just copy all of these folders put them here now if we go back here click refresh list uh, actually my bad i need to put them within just the raw folder themselves so put it here put these over here like so almost done now and now finally and we can actually do a bit of housekeeping and delete these other folders as well now if we refresh the list we've got the bios files right here i'm going to select 7012 and click next and now it's asking for the directory of your game. You can have multiple directories. You could have your multiple drives depending on how many games you actually have. So if I click add and I go to documents, ROMs, PCS, PC, PS2, click open and say, would you like to scan the directory recursively? 
So what that means is if you have your games like I have within the PS2 folder, uh, you know, you, you can just click no. But if you have it organized, maybe you have all the Grand Theft Auto games within a Grand Theft Auto folder. Within that, you have another folder for GTA 3, Vice City, San Andreas, for example. And then within that, you have the actual files themselves. It won't pick them up unless you do recursively, which means you'll scan every folder within that. And again, this is another reason I recommend you organize it. If you just put them somewhere random and there's so many other folders and files there, you'll scan all those other files and it's just a waste of time. But yeah, just click yes, you'll scan it. It's, again, I've only got one game there, so it's very quick. You can click scan recursively as the checkbox. Click next. Now we need to set up our controllers. So you can do up to two controllers and you can actually even do more. I'll have separate videos covering that. You can choose your controller type. Most of the time it will be DualShock 2. And now let's go to automatic mapping. Uh, I'm just connecting up my Xbox controller, which appears there, Xbox Series X controller. It will also support like a DualSense PS5 controller. We'll have a separate video covering how to connect different controllers up. Now that the automatic mapping is done, click next and we can click finish. So this is what I'll say. So this is the stable release. It forces you onto the nightly release. I can just click remind me later or download and install. Like I said, they are pretty stable to be fair. So the first thing we want to do is there's no covers. We want to add some covers. So if you go to tools, cover downloader, and I will put a link in the description to this PS2 covers page and you go down and there's two covers. You can have 3D covers or like the original covers. I prefer the original. Copy that, click start, close. If I click that now, we have the covers. Oh, good. Now what we're going to do is go through the settings. So if I just go to you know interface, leave that as default. And you can choose the starting full screen, for example. Game list, you can add more folders or you know take folders away. You can change the BIOS here, but you can leave it. Leave this as default. You pretty much never want to change this. In graphics, this is where things get a little interesting. So I'm on a M1 Pro laptop. If you are on an older Intel uh, laptop, you probably want to go something like Vulkan. If you're on the newer stuff, you can choose Metal. If Metal doesn't work or you're having issues, you can go for the Vulkan renderer. Software is going to be really slow and you pretty much don't need to do that. And borderless full screen the aspect ratio the standard one is four by three some games using a patch you know you can get widescreen support if they don't support it like the game will be squashed and stretched so just bear that in mind i would like to just keep it as auto standard unless i know that game supports it and then you can customize that configuration afterwards you can apply widescreen patches etc as well so but feel free to look online for your particular game and now in rendering you want to choose the internal resolution. So the more powerful hardware you have, the higher the resolution that you can essentially, you know, put for the rendering, the higher, the, the sharper it looks. You know, you do get to a limit because, you know, if you go to 8K, if you're just gaming on a 720p monitor, you probably don't need to go that high. I mean, you probably could, you know, notice some visual difference beyond 720p on your 720p monitor, like 1080 or 1440. But beyond that you don't really i'm just going to go to 3x i know that looks good and it works well i always say go to native i know a lot of youtubers will say you know just go to four or five times it depends on your machine go to native make sure it works make sure it works with that game looks good then you know increase it and see what works good you can leave all of the default but in isotropic filtering probably a 16x this doesn't really have much of an impact on performance so let me give you a little rundown of what an isotropic filtering is it makes your games when you are in your game and you have like an obscure angle the textures or like the part that part of the screen can look a little blurry and distorted this helps fix that issue and um, blending accuracy leave you as basic but if you have issues there have been known issues increase it to like medium high full or maximum and see you know how that works as a result and in texture replacement this again leave it as default but if you have issues especially with metal or mac go to load textures as well and everything else you can leave as default you can enable anti-aliasing but honestly it looks pretty sharp with just a higher resolution as it is in audio we're going to leave this as default but here's a little tip 
make sure your back end is selected i mean you could have sdl you could have qb but i've found sometimes i'll download an application I'll, I'll i'll start running it like an emulator and there'll be no audio and i'm scratching my head you know what's happening because there's no back end selected so make sure there's something selected in memory cards we need to create our memory card click create it's not expensive like you know it used to be when we were kids go to the most compatible memory card and i'm just going to call this card one click ok and now just do for you slot one and that's it you can create another one for slot two for example everything else we can leave as default and yeah okay so let me just close this down make sure it has saved because i have heavily zoomed in on the screen and we're all good apart from that the only last thing i want to show you is controllers so in controllers though we've set our controller let me turn it back on because my controller has now turned off if we go to automatic mapping xbox series x controller if you want to overwrite it so if i want this as a right button you click it press the key on your game controller and you can change it accordingly and you can also again it's a little hard to see because i'm you know i am heavily zoomed in but there is a little section down here and i'll, I'll have a separate video honestly to cover it uh, where you can set you know different sort of states for your controller uh, profiles and that allows you to potentially have it for different games so if we go off that we've downloaded the covers we've you know set everything up now you know we're almost there i mean we're ready to go but what i would recommend right click your game go to properties and here there's a few things that you could potentially have a look at one it tells you your compatibility which is nice two in patches you can see if there's a patch and this has a widescreen patch and you know you can select it or you could ever click that apply widescreen patch setting in the settings here's another tip some games will run worse than others some games will run better depending on your hardware you can actually override the settings on a per game basis so the render if you know that vulcan works better on one game meta works better on another game you can overwrite it here so have your global settings which is what i've shown you then feel free to overwrite it because you're especially with the rendering if you start up in the rendering on some game like god of war or black you're going to get less performance versus some of the lower end games that's just something to bear in mind other than that double click we're ready to go and you can double click to maximize the screen but honestly if you genuinely do have the latest oh, my controller keeps disconnecting because the battery is dead but if you do genuinely have the you know a newer mac you're gonna be gold and you're gonna have such an amazing experience and there's one last thing i want to show you our controllers died from battery it's fine it works you know you, you know you're all good to go one last thing i want to show you is if you go to system there's load and save states this is pretty cool so we're at the you know the main menu right now you can do this anywhere go to system save state save slot one and now if i close this down and now let's say if i was to re open pcsx2 and i can do remind me later if i double click this it's going to go through the whole booting process again if i click system load state load that state it'll take me exactly to where i was in the game so this allows you to save anywhere regardless of the internal saving this is one little caveat though a lot of the times new update especially if you haven't played the emulator for a while and you come back and there's a new update like you was on version 1.7 and now you're on 2.4 it's going to break those save states internal saves are like a like it's an emulator system I mean, like it's it's different those will not break uh, um, so make sure as often as possible you do have internal saves i say these aren't a long-term measure these are a great temporary measure if i need to save them and then turn my machine off come back and i'm in the middle of a level you can do that especially if on these older games sometimes the saves will be 
long they take ages to get to the save and um, but that's it that's how you set up pcsx2 to play playstation 2 games on your mac windows is coming soon creating videos very shortly on connecting different controllers let me know what other emulation videos you would like to see next i'll see you there